In this lecture, we'll be talking about acute decompensated heart failure. It's defined as a worsening of the symptoms or signs of heart failure and usually present with a shortness of breath, lower limb edema, and decreased exercise tolerance. Why do we care? Because each time the patient is admitted, the mortality is increased and can reach up to 50% within one year after the fourth admission and there's a chance to put the patient on the right track to educate him about his um, disease and optimize his uh, management. Uh, some of the common precipitants for the um, uh, heart failure, first the serious ones like ischemia, arrhythmia, pulmonary embolism, uh, mechanical failure such as valvular insufficiency or infection, could be hypertension, diet and the fluid intake, uh, medication non-compliance and other um, among other uh, causes so for the assessment we usually start with the history we look for the symptoms and possible precipitant and then proceed to the uh, physical examination which is include the mental status uh, respiratory rate and oxygenation blood pressure the volume status GVB is one of the most important uh, things, lung sounds and the lower limb edema. And we'll do some uh, investigation, including ECG, chest X-ray, blood work, such as CBC, BMB, MAG and FOS, liver function test and coagulation. We could add also BNB, troponin and lactic acid as indicated. Echo, it's usually if it is a first presentation, or the old one is um, more than six months old or there is a new deterioration in the patient uh, condition. Point of care lung ultrasound is gaining popularity uh, these uh, days. Now based on your assessment, if the patient is uh, having uh, uh, l l low oxygen saturation despite supplemental oxygen, he's hypotensive, the periphery is called clammy, the mentation is poor, and his labs show like elevated lactate, kidney function, liver function test. Uh, this could indicate the patient is in cardiogenic shock. In this case, you consult CCU. Otherwise, if the patient um, can maintain the oxygenation and perfusion, admit to the uh, regular floor. And usually, we want the patient to be in the warm, dry uh, category. Um, now, to put the patient on telemonitor or not, this is the recommendation of American Heart Association and they are saying, till you stabilize the patient, just keep them on the uh, tele. Now, for the management, um, um, is that like the main thing is to maintain the oxygenation and ventilation, early IV diuresis and the monitor, then monitor uh, the response and the oxygenation. We usually like check in the pulse oximetry and support as needed to keep it above 90%, starting with the nasal cannula, non-invasive pressure ventilation, and intubation as needed. The second thing, or the main uh, management, is the um, uh, early IV diuresis. It's usually a loop diuretic. We start with the low dose. If it is a new uh, patient, uh, about like 20-40 IV uh, milligram. Uh, if, it, if, if the patient is already on Lasix, we usually put them on um, uh, 2 to 2.5 times the home dose and then monitor uh, the response. Usually the goal is between 1 and 1.5 liter per day. If there is an inadequate response, you could increase the dose, the frequency, you could use the bumetanide, which overcome the bowel edema. Uh, you could use the loop diuretics plus thiazide diuretics or could use venodilation with the uh, nitrate. Uh, regarding the goal directed medical therapy, if it is a first presentation, you obviously, you obviously wait till the patient improves, then you put them on the goal directed medical therapy. If they are already on this uh, therapy, if, if the patient is hemodynamically stable, you can just continue uh, them. Uh, if not, uh, hold this medication and uh, especially in the uh, angiotensin converting enzyme um, category if the patient has worsening kidney function or hyperkalemia just hold the medication then you can monitor the response in terms of the symptoms uh, signs vital and the volume status inputs output the tilly uh, overnight uh, or over day tilly and labs basic labs cbc uh, basic metabolic and the mag and uh, FOS. 
Now we discharge the patient uh, when the symptoms improved, he's eovolemic, and you should start him on goal directed medical therapy once he's hemodynamically optimized and um, work on your disposition from day one, educate the patient, optimize his regimen, and ensure uh, outpatient follow up for him. Uh, some miscellaneous topic is that for, for the heart failure with the preserved rejection fraction, you lack 50% of the patient that presented to the hospital. Uh, uh, they will be like heart failure with the preserved ejection a fraction here the volume management is very delicate and uh, you, it need a careful assessment and you could use diuresis as needed if the patient hypertensive you need to lower the blood pressure and you could use IV medication for that such as nitroprusside the cardiorenal syndrome is a heart failure plus kidney failure either acute or chronic and the point here is usually when you start the um, diuresis the kidney function will improve and uh, you should continue the diuresis even like if there is like a slight uh, worsen of the kidney function or the blood uh, pressure now general take home messages is that as long as the patient can maintain oxygenation and perfusion we are good um, start early IV diuresis this is and monitor the response uh, keep the beta blocker if it is a mild exacerbation and work in your dispo from uh, day one. Thank you for listening.